Hey guys, my name is Jason Carr. You're watching Old Car Auto Guy, and guess what? Today, we're gonna to be talking about the five things I hate about my Hyundai Veloster. So guys, this is my wife's 2013 Hyundai Veloster Turbo. And today we're gonna to be talking about the five things I hate about this Veloster. But first, we're gonna take it inside because it is time for an oil change and it's a heck of a lot warmer in there. So before we get into this video, the five things I hate about my Hyundai Veloster, we are going to be talking about it while I'm doing an oil change. So I'm going to go grab the oil catch can and we'll get started. And wouldn't you know it, the oil catch can is full. Thanks Tim. This never works out. Well, now that I got some 10W30 beard oil in me now, I can almost patent that stuff. Let's get started. So the very first thing on my list of things I hate about this Veloster is just simply how low to the ground it is. Now, I've said it before in plenty of my reviews, you guys all know that I'm a tall guy and getting into the car is not the issue it's climbing out like you're literally dragging your butt on the ground and i know it's supposed to be, supposed to be some sort of a sports car but you know it really isn't for me although once you're in it it truly is fun to drive that turbo has got some kick and quite frankly i have to think of reasons like this to actually get a chance to drive it it is fun so the second thing that I would have to say that I hate about this car is the ride. So yes, it is a sports car and yes, it has 18 inch low profile tires. Well, it's got a sport tuned suspension in it as well. This does not drive anything like the Hyundai Accent on which the platform is shared with, by the way. So you're not gonna get that comfortable touring ride like you would on an Accent. This is truly tuned to be a sports car. These tires are li literally like that and they, uh, they pick up everything. So it is a stiff ride, granted when you're on the highway, it does hug the road and it takes them corners pretty good. But in town driving. The third thing that I would have to say that I am very disappointed in in this car is the interior visibility when you're sitting in the driver's seat granted this particular vehicle has a backup camera you're gonna need it when you're sitting in there there are so many blind spots behind you that it's very difficult to back up when you're backing out of your driveway backing out of a parking space or even just simply looking around a corner to see if something's coming the blind spots in this car aren't great if you are a confident backup driver that's one thing but you really got to make use of all the aids available, meaning the backup sensors and the backup camera. And I'll insert a clip right here to give you an idea of what that looks like. So here we are sitting inside the car and I just wanted to give you an idea of what it was like when I say poor visibility. Now, it doesn't help that we have these deep tinted side windows. So as you look out the back window, I don't know if you can see the reflection of the third brake light in the back window. But as you look around on this side, between the headrest blocking a lot of the window here, and then you got that big C pillar back there. And on this side, it's not much better. So what we tend to do is rely on our fogged up backup camera. So I just turn the camera around here so I can get to the oil filter and we'll let that drip a little bit. Now number four is kind of a 
take it or leave it type of an excuse of why I don't like this car. And it simply is this. I don't find it very good on fuel. Mind you, it has 200 horsepower and a six-speed transmission with a turbo. One would think you should still be getting close to 35 or 40 miles per gallon. Well, maybe to the average person who would drive it normal, you might. But for this guy, and my lead-footed wife? No. The power going from, say, second, third, and fourth gear, you've got the pedal to the metal every time, even if you're just going from stoplight to stoplight. So, yeah, it's not a lot of horsepower compared to some vehicles out there, but in this car, as light as it weighs, she's pretty responsive, man. She's got some beans. And for those of you who are curious, I will have the horsepower and torque numbers up on the screen for you to see. Now the number five thing that I don't like about this car are the headlights. And not because they're not bright enough, they are, but simply because I cannot get this look, and I'm all about aesthetics sometimes, with the LED lights all by itself. And the reason for that is, is that when I turn the headlights or park lights on, I get a daytime running light that comes on with it. So you'd never just get the LEDs by themselves. There's always something on with it. Take a look. Now I know it may seem minor, but there's a lot of vehicles out there that are very aesthetically pleasing simply by the LED lights on the front of the car. This one could be one of them. So don't get me wrong, I really do like this car, simply because it's sporty, it's fast, it's a manual transmission, and for such a simple little Hyundai, it gets lots of looks on the street. So although these five things I hate about this car really are trivial, don't take this as I'm hating on the car. These are just small little observations that I've picked out that may not be necessarily an issue for someone like you. So if you're somebody who's looking for small and sporty and unique, I've got another Veloster sitting on my lot. It's black, it's non-turbo, and it's an automatic. So it should appeal to a bigger crowd. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I certainly appreciate every comment, every thumbs up, and every single subscriber that chooses to watch Old Car Auto Guide. As I always say, stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. Guys, I love you. God bless. Let's do it again in the next upload.